Hey, welcome. Pastor Joe Williams again with the encouraging word for this week. And as I give you the encouraging word, I want to tell you something, and I'm not trying to be dramatic, uh, but maybe not quite an hour ago, I think I saw a miracle. Uh, I completely changed what I was going to talk to you about for the encouraging word. And, and let me tell you about it. Um, I just think that the Lord works in such mysterious ways that you'll really enjoy this. Um, we have a, uh, a kitchen, a, a portable kitchen, a huge one, that the head star is putting in behind the gymnasium. And it's so large, it's like when you send a mobile home and you it's like a double wide or a triple wide actually, and you have to pull it behind a trailer and it was in three parts. And I've been kind of watching at a distance, they've been putting this together to form a kitchen outside of, of the gymnasium by our school where they had to start. And for some reason, right as I was going to come up here and do the encouraging word, I decided to walk over there and just see how they were progressing. And I walked around behind, tried to kind of stay out of the way, and the men were underneath one half of this building, and they were removing parts of it, and then they were going to pull the framework underneath out of it. And as they were doing that, one man was under, and he was taking a big pneumatic drill, and he was pulling parts out. But they had not uh, reinforced everything as they should. And right before my eyes, when he took one part out, the whole building fell and a huge metal bar crushed him. And I thought he was dead, but he was couldn't move uh, and he was screaming. And I, I was screaming and the other guys on the crew were screaming and they were trying to lift the building, they panicked and we were throwing bro blocks and everything out of the way. And then the other guy thought, oh, the, the lifter. You know, I, I can't think of the word right now, but it was like a, a huge hydraulic jack on wheels, uh, bigger than you would for a car because it was made to move a building. And they got it over there. And I just kept saying, Jesus help me, Jesus help me. And, and I felt like a little kid. I didn't know what to say or do. And uh, the other fellow finally got the jack underneath one end of the building and he, he got it to go up and it took the pressure off him. And to make the long story short, uh, he didn't have a bone broken. He was sore and he was scared. We were, we were all scared. We, we called 911 and, and the fire department uh, were so blessed to be just a few blocks away, came and examined him and they told him he needed to go to the hospital. He goes, no, 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 I, I'm okay. Uh, I got Ricardo and we went over there and we got these guys and the construction crew together. And guess what? They were ready to pray. I mean, what, what an opportunity. Uh, and I gave him a Bible and, and one of the, the fellows there, his dad worked on the same crew and it was his son and then a cousin. And one guy just kept yelling over and over, primo, mi primo, mi primo, my cousin, my cousin. And then we were all, once we knew he was safe, we prayed together and we were four men and we just began to weep. And we just said, thank you, Jesus. Gracias, Jesus. Gracias a Dios. Thank you, Jesus. You see, I believe, and I, I don't know if we hadn't called the name of Jesus, he would have been crushed or not. But I choose to think the Lord listened to his prayer. And the, the man that was trapped, he was praying too. Let me read to you right now. I don't know what's going on in your life. But some of you may not understand theology very well. You may have all kinds of conflicting feelings and be angry or scared or despairing. But start with the basics. Call upon the name of the Lord. Just cry out to Him like a little child. Listen, I'm going to give you just about three or four short verses. And then I'm just going to ask you right now just to, just to cry out to the Lord, just to pray for Him. This is in Genesis chapter 4. So just about... Not quite as far back as Adam, but almost. Seth, one of his descendants. Um, Genesis 4.26. This is kind of the first recorded time in the Bible where it actually says, Men called upon the name of the Lord. We know that Adam spoke to the Lord, but called upon him like praying in worship. And here's what it says. And to Seth, to him also, a son was born. 
and he called his name Enosh. Then men began to call upon the name of the Lord. Now just think about all what that means. Wow. Men began to call upon the name of the Lord. So let me jump forward just a, a little bit here. And like I said, I'm just going to read to you just a few passages. The next one is in Psalm. In Psalms, it's all just replete with passages over and over, calling out to the Lord. So listen to this one. Psalm 145, and starting with verse 17. It says, The Lord is righteous in all his ways and kind in all his deeds. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of those who fear him. He will also hear their cry and will save them. Now, don't get too deep on me here, okay? I know that every time we call upon the Lord, we don't get what we want and we're not always saved. We know there's tragedies in people's life, maybe in your life. But just think about it. The first thing you should always do is call upon the name of the Lord, especially if you see no help. You know, when, when that man was trapped, the other three men that were there, this huge building that fell on him, they grabbed one end and I grabbed one end. What idiocy? I mean, how could we lift the building? These guys who were professionals panicked and they forgot about the, the winch to lift him up. Well, many times you think you can do things in your own strength and you panic, or you think you're smart enough to handle it. And the Lord says, this is beyond you, many, many times beyond you. And the Lord is the one who lifts you up, amen? And let me read just a few more passages here. Um, I'd like for you to listen to this one closely, man. This is uh, one of my, my favorite ones. This is about the blind man who Jesus heals. This is in Luke chapter 18. And this is blind Bartimaeus. And you've heard this story many times, some of you. It came about that as he was approaching Jericho, that's Jesus, a certain blind man was sitting by the road begging. Now hearing a multitude going by, he began to inquire what this might be. And they told him, Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. So here's this blind man. He can't see what's going on, but he hears all the commotion of the crowd. And he called out saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And there is an explanation point here. So in the Greek that this was written in, it means it. He screamed it as loud as he could over the crowd. Please have mercy on me. And those who led the way were sternly telling him to be quiet. Ah, oh, shut up, man. There's, you're just a blind guy. Just mind your own business. But he kept crying out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Man, don't let other people tell you not to call on the name of Jesus. Don't let other people tell you that you shouldn't have faith. Don't let other people tell you that you shouldn't read your Bible, you shouldn't pray, and that there is no hope because you believe in Jesus Christ and you cry out to him. Right? And then you know some of you the rest of the story. He called out saying, Son of David, have mercy on me. And those who led the way were sternly telling him to be quiet. But he kept crying out even more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and commanded that he be brought to him. And when he had come near, he questioned him. What do you want me to do for you? Well, that was an obvious question. You see, Jesus wanted him to come out and, and say it. And he said, Lord, I want to regain my sight. And Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he regained his sight and he began following him, glorifying God. And when all the people saw it, they gave praise to God. Now again, you may tell me I've cried out before and God didn't heal me or didn't heal one of my relatives that died. That's not the point. The point is, is that you put your faith in God and you cry out to him. And whether he heals you or saves you in that particular situation, you still cry out to him. Now, listen, now here is the kind of the perfect prayer that Jesus prayed. Ah, it's not the Lord's prayer. This may surprise you. This is in the Garden of Gethsemane. This is in Matthew, all right? Matthew chapter 26, starting with verse 36. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go there 
and prayed. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be grieved and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here and keep watch with me. Some versions say that he, he prayed so hard and cried so hard that he sweat drops of blood. And he went a little beyond them, and he fell on his face, and he prayed, saying, My father, Abba, Daddy, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, and yet as I will, but as thou Ah, Jesus didn't claim this faith of this, that, and another. He wasn't being all macho. He just said, Lord, I'm grieved. I, I'm not, I don't want this to happen, but it's not my will, but yours. Verse 40, and he came to the disciples and he found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, ah, so you men could not keep watch with me for even one hour? So in other words, when you cry out to the Lord, don't always expect others to say, oh, good job. Or yes, I'm praying with you, brother, because they may not. This is the most personal thing that anyone can ever do. On your deathbed, you cry out to the Lord. No one can go with you when you go to an eternity. Only Jesus is there to greet you and to go with you. Verse 41, keep watching and praying that you may not enter temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again in a second time and he prayed, my father, if this can pass away, unless I drink it, but thy will be done. And again, he came and he found them sleeping for their eyes were heavy and he left them again and he went away and he prayed a third time saying the same thing once more. Lord, please take this away from me. I don't want to do this, but I will. I'll die this death. I'll suffer this anguish. I'll do everything you tell me because I'm obedient. Just be with me. And he came to the disciples and he said to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Arise, let us be going. Behold, the one who betrays me is at hand. Now let me tie this together. When you cry out to the Lord, he always hears you. The thief on the cross, he didn't know anything about theology. He just said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, you shall be with me today in paradise. Some of you right now just need to say a simple prayer. Jesus help me. Jesus forgive me. Jesus lead me. Whatever it happens to be. And then the Lord will do the rest. And how he answers you and, and, and what happens in the end, the Lord will give you the strength. So let's just start right there. Let me pray for you right now. Father in heaven, I just pray for my brothers and sisters right now, Lord. Uh, wherever they happen to be, whatever's going on in their life. Lord, I cry out for them like I did this man that was trapped, God, that I was totally helpless. I could not help him in any way. And Lord, he was totally helpless. Father, right now, I pray for anyone who's listening, and I ask him just to say, Dear Jesus, help me. Help me, Lord. Tell me what to do. When you pray that prayer, that's the best beginning ever. God bless you. Have a great day.